happy. But I always miss you must whoop me. But I always miss you always did. And I ain't used to working unless I get whipped. So Miss Ophelia Tragic Topsy would scream and groan and, and plug. But half an hour later she would be sitting among the other little niggers belonging to the house laughing about it. Miss Feeder will, she would say. She can't do it no how. And all you niggas, she would go on. Does you know you all sinners? Well, you is. Everybody is. White folks are sinners too. Miss Feeder say so. But I specs niggas is the biggest one. But ye ain't any of ye up to me. I so awful wicked. And there can't nobody do nothing with me. I specs I is the wickedest critter in the world. Then she would turn a somersault and come up bright and smiling, evidently quite pleased with herself. Chapter 15, Eva and Topsy. Two or three years passed. Uncle Tron was still with Mr. St. Clair, far away from his home. He was not really unhappy, but always in his heart was the aching longing to see his dear ones again. Now, he began to have a new sorrow. He loved his little mistress, Eva, very tenderly, and she was ill. He saw that she was growing white and thin. She no longer ran and played in the gardens for hours together as she used to do. She was always tired now. Miss Ophelia noticed it too and tried to make Mr. St. Clair see it, but he would not. He loved his little Eva so much that he did not want to believe that anything could be the matter with her. Mrs. St. Clair never thought that anyone except herself could be ill. So Eva grew daily thinner and weaker and Uncle Tom and Aunt Ophelia more and more sad and anxious. But at last she became so unwell that even Mr. St. Clair had to own that something was wrong and the doctor was sent for. In a week or two, she was very much better. Once more, she ran about playing and laughing, and her father was delighted. Only Miss Ophelia and the doctor sighed and shook their heads. And little Eva herself knew, but she was not troubled. She knew she was going to God. Papa, she said one day, there are some things I want to say to you. I want to say them now while I am able. She seated herself on his knee and laid her head on his shoulder. It is all no use, Papa, to keep it to myself any longer. The time is coming when I am going to leave you. I am going never to come back. And Eva sobbed. Eva, darling, don't say such things. You are better, you know. No, Papa, I'm not better. I know quite well, and I am going soon. And I want to go, she went on. Only I don't want to leave you. It almost breaks my heart. Don't, Eva, don't talk so. What makes you so sad? I feel sad for our poor people. I wish, Papa, they were all free. Isn't there any way to have all slaves made free? That is a difficult question, dearest. There is no doubt 
that this way is a very bad one. A great many people think so. I do myself. I wish there was not a slave in the land, but then I don't know what is to be done about it. Papa, you are such a good man and so noble and kind. Couldn't you go all around and try and persuade people to do right about this? When I'm dead, Papa, then you will think of me and do it for my sake. When you're dead, Eva? Oh, child, don't talk to me so. Promise me at least, Father, that Tom shall have his freedom as soon as I am gone. Yes, dear, I will do anything you wish. Only don't talk so. Miss Ophelia and Eva had been to church together. Miss Ophelia had gone to her room to take off her bonnet while Eva talked to her father. Suddenly, Mr. St. Clair and his little girl heard a great noise coming from Miss Ophelia's room. A minute later, she appeared dragging Topsy behind her. Come out here, she was saying. I will tell your master. What is the matter now? asked Mr. St. Clair. The matter is that I cannot be plagued with this child any longer, said Miss Ophelia. It is past all bearing. Here. I locked her up and gave her a hymn to learn. What does she do but spy out where I put my key? She has gone to my wardrobe, taken a bonnet trimming, and cut it all to pieces to make dolls' jackets. I never saw anything like it in my life. I don't know what to do, she went on. I have talked and talked. I have talked till I'm tired. I have whipped her. I have punished her in every way I can think of, and still she is as naughty as she was at first. Come here, Topsy, you monkey, said Mr. St. Clair. Topsy came, her hard, round eyes glittering and blinking half in fear, half in mischief. What makes you behave so, said Mr. St. Clair, who could not help being amused at her funny expression. Specs is my wicked heart. Miss Phoebe says so. Don't you see how much Miss Ophelia has done for you? She says she has done everything she could think of. La, yes, master. Oh, Mrs. used to say so too. She whipped me a heap harder and used to pull my hair and knock my head against the door. But it didn't do me no good. I spent her days to pull every hair out from my head. It wouldn't do no good neither. I'm so wicked. Law, well, that is nothing but a nigger anyway. I shall have to give her up, said Miss Ophelia. I can't have that trouble any longer. Eva had stood silent, listening. And now she took Topsy by the hand and led her into a little room close by. What makes you so naughty, Topsy? She said with tears in her eyes. Why don't you try to be good? Don't you love anybody, Topsy? Don't know nothing about love. I love candy, that's all. But you love your father and mother? Never had none, you know. I tell you that, Miss Eva. Oh, I forgot, said Eva, sadly. But hadn't you any brother or sister or aunt or no? None of them. 
never had nothing, for no, nobody. But Tatsu, if you would always try to be good, you might. Could never be nothing but a nigga if I was ever so good, said Tatsu. If I could be skin and come white, I'd try then.